In fact, the strain to pay salaries and wages continues to increase month by month. It is becoming increasingly difficult to maintain the payment of salaries and wages. And we all know, too, the payment by Social Security has been grossly affected. We have failed to return to normalcy in order to put people back to work. And the longer the COVID situation protracts, the longer our people will take to get vaccinated, then those challenges will persist. So for every time the country is locked down, for every time there's a decrease in productivity, for every time the curfew hours remain in place, that's a business that can't earn money. For every time a flight does not come into Jamaica, a lot of people think it's about deep pocket owners of the hotel. But we don't go on to think that the hotel employs thousands of ordinary Jamaicans who go home and who feed their families. And if that sector is closed down, it has a ripple effect. A lot of people talk about the exchange rate, depreciation or devaluation in the dollar based on demand and supply. Our second largest foreign exchange earner, perhaps behind remittances, has always been tourism. If the sector is not able to operate, then there's going to be a substantial drop in foreign exchange earnings. If there's a drop in foreign exchange earnings, it means that the supply of foreign exchange to this market will be less than the demand. If the supply is less than the demand, meaning the demand is greater, the dollar is going to slide. If the dollar slides, a number of things would increase with the slide of the dollar to include our JPS bills. And our JPS bills become problematic for individuals in the context where at least two days of the working week, some of us have to work from home. So your kilowatt hour of, of consumption of electricity on your home bill is going to increase and your bill for JPS will increase when the dollar slides and you cannot expect to call for government to roll back GCT because part of the way in which government can pay wages and salaries is from the taxes that government collects if government can't collect taxes because people are not working or because businesses are closed and therefore there's just not enough taxes either from income tax or any other consumption tax like GCT, we run into the problem that Antigua is running into. So it's all a vicious circle. I've heard the calls for us to mandate vaccination for tourists coming into the island. It's not something I'm prepared to dismiss. And the chief reason I'm not going to dismiss it is because our major trading partners have the supply of vaccination, vaccines and a large percentage of their population is vaccinated. So it may not be a big turnoff if we say to the United States, to Canada, to the UK, and to other people in the world, you need to be vaccinated before you come in. But if I lived in any one of those countries and I was looking at destination to travel to, you think I would want to come to a country that hasn't yet mandated vaccination for its own people. A country that is hovering at about 6% of its population being vaccinated. 
a country that has not mandated vaccination for the staff in the hotel industry. But then they want to mandate it for me. Of what value would that be? What benefit is a tourist wanting to come to a country like Jamaica to have from that? I can understand the benefit Jamaica would receive from imposing it and to that extent I'm not prepared to discard it. But we also have to look to see whether the thing that we rely on, second to remittances, if we ask for this thing, whether the people we're hoping to attract would turn to other nations that have greater percentages of their population vaccinated and not come here, in which event the whole corollary, the circle I spoke to you about, look to see where the, the break in the circle will come and who is likely to suffer from that break in the circle. Bear in mind at the moment that the mechanisms that are now in place for Jamaica with not only tourist arrival but every single person coming here, they seem to be reasonably good. I, I actually don't buy this thing of the pre-testing before travel. I think it's the most ridiculous thing I've heard about because you test at most 72 hours before you travel. And you can probably walk out of the testing site and you go and mingle in the crowd of rowdy whatever people. And you show up at the airport after you get your COVID, your jam COVID pass, and you show up at the airport with your 72 hour old um, authorization and your, your COVID negative and you're not tested when you get to the airport. So it really is comfort for, for a fool. But it seems to have had some kind of an impact. I really don't know what to say what impact it has because some strains of the virus have got into the country. And they got into the country by somebody who brought them in from overseas because the virus didn't begin here. Yeah? But what do we do? Why can't we mandate the vaccination for our people? It's our people we want to keep out of the hospitals. Perhaps more needs to be done before we get to that point. I think that if we are not yet there, we are very near that point. I happen to believe that we should not have some categories of workers turning up for work at all, unless and until they are vaccinated. And chief among those are doctors and nurses. I don't care that if you have some of them who say they're not taking it, then the system is going to be without them. Perhaps the system needs to be without them. Because when they do come down with the virus, and God forbid if we were to lose another one, the entire group, their entire group of co-workers are so deflated, their family members lose a valuable member. You cannot show up for war. You cannot be in the middle of World War III and you go out with a piece of sharpened stick when everybody out there is shooting M16. So I think it should be mandated for that group and a number of other groups, at least now. But maybe some things need to be done before. So I would love to hear from the nurses. I would love to hear from a doctor or two who is out there. What holds you back from taking the vaccination? But more than anything else, the message I want you to, to take away from this, it was always going to be a very tough fight. 
in peace time we never had beds sufficient beds for people before the advent of covid nothing that is happening now is unexpected when we were saying flatten the curve this is what we're talking about keep the numbers down so people don't have to end up in hospital at the same time most of them needing ventilators because we can never have enough ventilators we can never have enough oxygen if the demand is just too much i hope that we are seeing a bend in this in the covid numbers but for what it's worth i want to tell our soldiers in the trenches our nurses and our doctors we understand this train but do not lose hope do not give up on us there are some times in life as hard as it is sometimes all you can do is do your best because it is written maybe we are up on one of those moments it is written some of us may not like what is written but it is written be kind to yourselves as hard as it is find something about which you can be positive this was never going to be a sprint always a marathon lactic acid will defeat the greatest athlete you must know when the lactic acid is coming in and know to keep your form hold your head don't swing too much from side to side and lose your energy don't lose hope none of you at home do not lose hope do not give up do not give in you know all the things you're supposed to do long time ago but more than anything else do not lose hope